And welcome, welcome. How's it going? I'm Pastor Cindy. We are the Glory Chain. Hello, YouTube. Hello, TikTok. Come on in, everyone. We're going to tap that screen. Invite everyone you know to come on in. Meet you in the front row. Let me flip our screen around here on TikTok. Let's uh, give it a try here. One, two, three. There it is. Let's make it straight-ish. How's that? Close? <laughs> Close? Hello, hello, hello. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. May the Spirit of the Lord be with us. Hallelujah. The Bible says two or more, where two or more are gathered in his name, he's in our midst. That means he's all over this world. He is right where you are. Hallelujah. There is no walls between us. There is no wall that can keep him out or keep him in. He's right here to love on you, to bless you, to minister to you. And it is my great honor to lift Jesus higher and to be before y'all tonight. So come on in. We do have our YouTube channel up tonight. If someone wants to go hang out over there, that's perfectly fine. The reason we have the YouTube channel is so we have the replay offered. So if you cannot be here at this particular time for our normal um, our normal gatherings here on TikTok, you can go watch the replay on YouTube. And the address to get there is Pastor Cindy Barnes with no space between, just Pastor Cindy Barnes, like one big word. And when you get there, if you have not subscribed, please, please, please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. Subscribing to YouTube is like following on TikTok, but we do need more followers. The more followers you have in YouTube, the further out it goes. I don't understand why, because here on TikTok, the minute you go live stream, you're everywhere present. So hallelujah. So anyway, we just do what we're told to do, right? Is that how it works around here? <laughs> do what we're told to do. Let me uh, darken this screen so I can see your comments. Ah, there you are. Let me say hello to y'all. There's Lizzie. Hello, hello. God bless you. There's Miss Jetta. Hello. God bless you. There's Maxwell. Look at your early tonight, Maxwell. Oh, let me see. I'm trying to see if you're trying to trick me, um, Batman, but hello, hello. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Let's see. Oh, I'm not sure what you're trying to say there. Uh, wow, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Gungaga. I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I'm sure I am. Uh, not sure what you mean, but yeah, we don't worship a religion around here. This is for people of every age, every stage, every race, color, tribe, tongue, every culture, every, every religion. If you happen to be part of a religion, everyone, everywhere. For me and my house, we serve the Lord. I am a Jesus follower. I am a, uh, an ordained pastor, a Christian pastor. Uh, we teach according to the Bible, and that is what we teach. That is what we believe, and we don't worship a religion, but we do worship Jesus. So this is a Jesus follower church. Let me expand on that. Although we are the glory chain, we are a church without walls. We are a Jesus follower church. You can go to our website, theglorychain.com. Find out everything you want to know about us. If I don't answer all the questions, you can reach out to me over there, and I'll, I'll get back with you, and I'll do my best to answer all your questions. For some people, live stream church is just the, the, the ticket. That's exactly what you've been looking for. My husband and I pastored a brick-and-mortar church for 18 years, and as soon as the transition happened after those 18 years were finished and our uh, assignment there was finished. The live stream amazing blessing began. And so we have been live stream only on purpose five nights a week for seven and a half years. And so uh, my thoughts on LGBTQ, uh, well, everyone, as far as I know in that community, has a precious soul that Jesus died for. So my thoughts are the same as any other person that Jesus loves. God loves you. He has a plan for your life, a good plan, and you are more than welcome here. So um, come on in. Invite your friends. Invite your people. Hallelujah. So God is good, and I thank you all for being here. Now, 
for the last couple of weeks, we've been a little off kilter because my husband had uh, some major surgery. So I've been a little bit not being able to be here exactly at the same time. But typically we are here at 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And so you'll find all that on the website. Um, for when I said live stream might be your, your cup of tea or your ticket, uh, some people are looking for something exactly like this. It's not for everyone. I, I, I think it should be, but it's not for everyone. Um, but it is for a lot of people. And so there's many people that just cannot get to a brick and mortar for one reason or another. Uh, maybe you don't have transportation. Maybe you don't have the finances to pay for transportation to pick you up and bring you home. Bus, Uber, whatever it may be. Maybe you have a physical limitation that keeps you from being able to get out and go to a brick and mortar and be comfortable there. Uh, this is a church that you can just come in your pajamas. You can be in your comfiest recliner and um, you come as you are. And so it really is a perfect, a perfect fit for many people. Uh, also, another reason I love it so much is that I am called to reach the lost. I'm called to reach people of every age, every stage, every race, color, tribe, tongue, as I said. And those are the people that are everywhere. Uh, a lot of those people that are still on their journey, still searching. Some have been hurt in church. Some have been hurt and upset with God because things didn't go how you hoped they would. Uh, some have been, you know, let down by other Christians that maybe didn't keep their word. And there's a thousand other reasons that people find their way uh, to be a little bit foggy in in their uh, vision of what they believe or what they where they want to land, and so this is a good opportunity for you to just come into the presence of God. This is where the Holy Spirit is residing, where two or more are gathered. He says He's in He's in our presence. If we're gathered in His name, He is with us. So this is where I invite you. You may be living under a bridge. You may be living in a tent. You may be living in your car. You may be living with friends, sleeping on couches, sleeping in on park benches. But most people have a cell phone. And if you have a cell phone, you can be right here in the front row. And that is what is so phenomenal and so different about this particular live stream church, because we're on purpose live stream only for that reason. And so... Um, but whatever you believe, wherever you are right now, wh whatever you are dealing with, um, there's no strings attached to God's love. He just simply does love you. And the Bible says that it's not the knowledge of other people that will lead you to God. It's not the uh, fantastic sermons that people preach that will lead you to God. It's not the uh, uh, fantastic charismatic preachers <laughs> <laughs> that will lead you to God. They might lead you to want to know more about God, but the Bible says it is the kindness of God that leads to repentance or the kindness of God that leads to change of, of any kind. So because that is truth, then it is for me to be kind. The Glory Chain is a church where we reach out to the lost and we kindly invite you in to the presence of God. Once you're here, you just hang out, sit in the front row with the rest of us and let God love on you. I believe with all my heart that God is absolutely capable of revealing himself to you without anyone else getting in the way. And when that happens, and it will happen, at some point it will happen, then you will have your own personal encounter, your own personal invitation. And when you take God up on it and choose to love him back, if you ever should get to that place, then the connection is made. That has anything to do with church or what time church is or where church uh, meets or where they gather or who is preaching or any of the other stuff. How good the music is, what programs do they have, how many colored lights do they have, all of the stuff that people go to church for all those kinds of reasons has nothing to do with a personal relationship with the Lord who loves you. So... That's a tiny tidbit of who we are. I hope it's just enough to make you want to stick around, but you are more than welcome to just hang out. You don't need to talk. You can if you want. This is a place I allow anyone to give their point of view 
this isn't where we put duct tape on people's mouth. This is not where we block people. Uh, the Lord never blocked me. And boy, oh boy, I deserve to be. I know that. I deserved it many times. And uh, the Lord never blocked me. He never blocked me out of his life. He just continued to show up wherever I was, continued to rescue me from my own choices. And eventually, one day, I was all alone. I wasn't even in a church service. No one was, there was no fancy sermon. There was no fancy building. There were no fancy programs. It was just me and him. And that's when it happened. And I chose then to love him back. And that's when the connection was made. That's how it was made. I had my own encounter. And because of that, and I'm thankful and grateful for that, I know that the same can happen for you, which is why I will not get in the way of that. All right. So my goal is to offer a place for people to gather. And during the week, we do different things. We pray every night for anyone that needs prayer. Uh, I try to answer questions the best that I can and help you guys through struggles of life. I've been a pastor, an ordained pastor, along with my husband since December of 95. And so I, we've heard every story. We've heard every problem. We've, we've dealt with everything you can imagine. And at the end of the day, the answers are pretty much the same. So it's if you really want the Lord's help or you want advice, I think I can help you. Uh, also, Mondays and Tuesdays are when we have a simple Bible study of some sort where we on purpose open the Bible uh, because if we don't do it on purpose, we may never do it. All right. Wednesday is our prayer meeting where we on purpose pray. That is our official prayer meeting, although we pray every night. Wednesday is pure prayer. Thursday is our fellowship night. That is also the night that we pin the map. Pin the map. If you look, you'll see the red tacks on the map. Uh, these are locations of places where we have met beautiful people from all over the world in the last seven and a half years, been able to pray a blessing on them and their home, uh, their corner of the world. And then on Thursdays, we put a tech right in their vicinity so that we can say, yeah, we really are a global ministry. Now for 18 years, let's see if I can make my finger go the right way. Let's see. Where am I? It's backwards for me here. Is it there? Here, right there. I was right about there for 18 years, hoping that all of the people in the world that I had such a burden for would find us right there. Well, that's not possible. That's the reason we were called a community church. We were reaching out to our community, the community that we were based in. And I think that we did a great job. We met and helped so many beautiful people those years. But my heart was always for the rest of the world. And so what we have now is a global ministry. Uh, Saturdays, we come together for communion and then prayer. So if you don't want to take communion with us or you are not a Jesus follower, but you still want to hang out with us or you need prayer or advice or just a friend, come anyway. Uh, communion doesn't take the whole time. It's just a little few minutes in the beginning. And then after that, we pray and we talk and I get to know each other. There it is in a nutshell. And we do it again and again and again, always saying, Holy Spirit, take your rightful place. Have your perfect way. I step aside and I invite you to do all that you do. I, I refuse to get in the way of it. So I have a plan. I have a little lineup. But everything is is easily changed when the Holy Spirit comes in with power, when his anointing falls. And you never know how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, but you want it to happen. And so when it happens, as it happens, then everything sometimes changes and it changes to me what it is that he wants to accomplish that very day or that very night. So come on in, make yourself at home and enjoy the service. There's Jimmy the girl. I see ya. She says, amen. There's Ida Jean. Hello, hello. Leanne, what's the question marks for? I don't understand the question marks. Mach 1. Is that a car? I think it is. David, uh, Pillow 3. He says, wow, that's nice. Thank you. 
Yes, yeah, so I encourage you to share this out with your followers. I encourage you to tap the screen. That is a way that uh, the Lord with his great big uh, magnet of love goes out into the world of TikTok or out into the world, period, and draws people in that need to be here. Tonight, um, we've been going through a book that I wrote. I wrote this book, and it was published and released right when the pandemic was published and released. <laughs> so the book tour and all the things that were lined up never happened. And so I just put it kind of on the shelf for three years or more, more than three years. Hold on. Hold on. Are you okay? Sorry about that, guys. Now, let's see, I lost my train of thought. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Um, <laughs> the book. <laughs> the book. <laughs> and so anyways, I put it on the shelf for three or four years, and uh, now I'm just going through the book. The book is called Beautiful God, Beautiful You from a Bird's Eye View. And it's a whimsical outlook and take on the God gifts, the gifts that God entrusts to us as he creates us. When you are created, created in the image of God, he, you are entrusted with gifts. When you uh, live your life without God, just living your life for yourself, those gifts still rise up. They are still used, but they're used in a different way. They're, for instance, For instance, maybe you have a real gift for art. And you just love to draw. You love to paint. You love to color. Um, you just you you just are able to take something, nothing and make something out of it. And so you might just go into the world and really get very famous doing art of whatever kind. When you get born again, God will take that same gift and He will cause you to be so drawn to want to use the art for him. You might end up writing a devotional and doing all of the artwork for the book. You might end up um, painting pictures of biblical scenes uh, and making greeting cards and postcards and stationery and just beautiful uh, framed pictures. Basically, just to give you an idea, same gift, but used in different ways. So the book is Through the Eyes of Birds, 19 birds to be specific. If I was a bird, I wonder what kind of gift I would have been entrusted with, okay? So, and it's quite whimsical. We're already on chapter 17. There's only 19 chapters. If you are just hearing about this today, I have done a YouTube simultaneous with our uh what is this? TikTok. <laughs> Every night that we have talked about the book. So you can go to our YouTube channel, Pastor Cindy Barnes. Go to the videos, scroll all the way down until you see a picture of an owl. That is chapter one of this book. Every Monday and Tuesday, Mondays and Tuesdays, I'm teaching on this book. So you can get caught up. And that way you don't even have to buy the book. I would still buy it if I were you because it's really cheap now. It started out, I thought expensive, 18 or 19 bucks. I didn't have the power to change that price. So I just didn't invite people to buy the book because I just felt like it was a lot to ask when I know there's starving children and all the stuff. I hear it every day. <laughs> but now the book is like five bucks, I think. I like having my own book. This is the only book I have. I only have this book. And, you know, I write in it. I like to look in it. Like, see here. You know, I it, my book is like my Bible. In my Bible, I write the things that, you know, reach out to me. Even though I wrote the book, when I read it again, there's new things that pop out at me. So you are free to buy it. It's up to you. No uh Pressure here. I didn't make a dime on this book, not even a penny, but I didn't write the book to make money. Thank God I wrote the book to help people. So here we go. I'm going to read through this chapter 17. My chapters in this book are very short, between two and three pages. I don't think that chapters have to be long to be good. 
I don't think that a topic has to be page after page after page for it to get hidden in your heart in a way that you'll remember. The main thing is keep the main thing, the main thing. So thank you, Father. Um, let me let me ask, I'm going to answer a few questions, then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to come back and we will pray and I will answer all questions. All right. So, uh, but I invite you guys to stick around if you would, please. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Judy. Texas here, she says, yay, hello. I'd love to know where you're coming in from if you are new to us, especially now Judy's not new to us, but uh, she's a forerunner. She's showing us how it's done. Give me your first name and where you're from and I'd love to do a shout out for you. Uh, Leanne says, may I please ask you something? Yes, of course. Mach 1 says, but how do you know it's for God? How do I know what's for God? Hmm, I might've missed something. You'll get it back. Ask Jesus. Let me see something here. May I please ask? Hello, hello. Hmm. All right. How do I know what's for God? On a serious note, how do you know it's God's will? I'm not sure what the subject is, Mach 1. Um, Luis says, even if you are an atheist? E what do you mean, even if you're an atheist? You guys are giving me half sentences. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. And Leanne, yes, you may ask. How do you know what God's will is? I thought you were saying, how do you know if if it's God's will? How do you know what God's will is? Well, the Bible is going to, the whole Bible, throughout the whole Bible, will teach you God's will. Okay, that's the word of God. The word of God is filled with the will of God. That is how you know. That's how you know. Otherwise, we don't have anything to base God's will on if we don't base it on the word of God. All right. If we didn't have the word of God, then we would all just be guessing. I wonder what his will is or, oh, I felt him. It must be his will. Not necessarily. Someone gave me a word when they prayed for me. It must be God. Well, it might be. But how do we know for sure? You're going to base everything according to the, the, the word of God. If the word of God matches the prayer or matches that feeling, if the word of God matches what it is that you are wanting to step into and step out of, then chances are it is God's will. But you want to make sure that what you do is in accordance with God's will, number one. Number two, that you have a flood of peace in your heart. If you have anxiety over it, if you're just you know, if you're if you're just tossing and turning at night because you're just not sure, you're not sure, you're confused. Confusion is not from God. Don't make big decisions while you're confused. Just let it rest. Let God will be patient with you. If it's God's will, it'll still be there for you when you're ready to understand that you've heard God's will, that you you know that God is leading you and guiding you. But it's always, always, always uh, going to match God's word. All right. <clears throat> Leanne says, I suffer from depression. My doctor, uh, my doctor booked me up again. Oh, goodness. Your doctor what? Um, my doctor booked me up again. Look at what that says. Look, Leanne, look at your uh, sentence. I'm a teacher. School starts tomorrow. Do I go? Do I go where? Go, look at that again on Friday. What do you mean booked me off again? I don't know what that means. You mean uh, booked you for another meeting? I'm not sure what that phrase means. I'm sorry. Oh, your doctor is releasing you from teaching? because of the depression that you're struggling with? Is that your? Is that what you're saying? Kate, I'm glad everything went well. I knew that it would because we prayed, right? Hi, Tony. Of course we will sing happy birthday to your wife. Father, 
Thank you. You know, I, I rather pray, but uh, I pray that the, the gifts that she receives for her birthday will be the presence of God. There's nothing better. There's nothing greater than the presence of God. So happy birthday to your wife, Jennifer. Happy birthday, Jennifer. I pray that this year is going to be among the best you've ever had. Shine bright, shine bright, shine bright. So should you go, should you go to the doctor or should you what? Uh, you know, I can't tell you what to do. I really cannot tell you what to do. I'm going to be doing a teaching on, well, on that subject um, without saying too much and without and when I say what I'm going to say, someone's going to go, oh, I know I know who you're talking about, but I'm not going to really reveal this yet to that person. I'm <laughs> not revealing it yet. But someone sent me a message this morning and asked for me to pray. Um, oh, I can't remember exactly the phrase. I'll just use a phrase. Pray because of a very busy week. Pray that I, uh, that I don't lose my mind or that I, you know, it was that kind of a thing, that kind of an idea. Uh, pray that I'll be able to handle it, basically. Um, and it's very clear in God's word what we can handle and why we can handle what what we've been given. But it's it's longer than just talking to you for 30 seconds. I can't give you just a quick answer, not on something that, that is this serious. Okay. I don't I just don't know you, and I'm not your doctor. I can only tell you what I know from God's word. But um, I do pray that the Lord, uh, who knows all, will reveal to you exactly what you need to do, the right thing to do. Uh, doing the right thing is not always the easy thing, but it's always the right thing. So, Father, I pray now that you will just guide and direct Leanne to do the right thing and that you will give her all that she needs to have a sound mind, a clear mind, and a peace-filled mind as she goes in the direction that she feels led to in Jesus name. And I pray that you are being led by God in all of the other uh, decisions that you're making in your life, not counting your, your job, every decision. I pray that you are going to God for the, for the, for the direction so that the manifestation of his, uh, um, what is it called? I was just talking about this last night, the uh, compass, the manifestation of his compass will be clear for you to know the direction to go. So make sure that you're not just doing it with this one subject, but with all subjects so that going to work or when to go back to work will be very easy for you to get there mentally and spiritually so that you can hear from God and that you can experience that peace to know how and when and where God is leading you. So that's the best I can give you, but it's really all that you need because he will guide you. He will direct you. <clears throat> hey, Dennis. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just go through this little chapter and let me just reveal to you tonight the bird that we're talking about. Are you this bird? Now, don't leave if you have a question if you or if you have a prayer request or if you're struggling in one way or another. When we're finished with this, then we'll go directly to uh, open forum and we'll see how, how God's leading. OK, um, again, the book is called Beautiful God, Beautiful You from a bird's eye view. It's a whimsical outlook on the God gifts. And if I were a bird, what kind of bird would I be and what kind of gifts would would I be as that bird? And the back of the book, the beginning of it, it says, do you know someone who repeats everything they hear? Do you have a friend that honks at drivers who cannot steer? Have you ever run from a blessing because you felt a twinge of fear? Or hid your head in the sand in hopes that your problems disappear? Well, there's 19 birds in here. Some of them do some of these things <laughs> without reading the rest of it. Uh, tonight, the bird is the goose. The goose. There are literally Christians that you know and people that you know that are not Christians that are goose, geese, gooses. <laughs> and depending on who you are and the gifts that God has entrusted to you, 
Some of you will have a lot of patience for the people that are geese. Some of you will have no patience for the people that are geese. But once you understand that a goose has been called by God just like the rest of us, once you realize and once you see what it looks like to be unsurrendered to God versus being surrendered to God, it will help you to have compassion for the people that you know that are geese. And instead of saying, I can't stand being around them, they just drive me crazy, you're going to have a compassion for them and pray for them. Pray for them to get right with God so that God can utilize the gifts and talents that he has placed within them for God's glory and for God's best. All right. So the goose. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for everyone who is here tonight within the sound of my voice all over this planet, north, south, east, and west. We need to be tapping this screen. Tap the screen. We need to get more people in here to hear this. People's lives would literally be changed and helped if they will just learn simple tasks, simple rules, certain principles about God and how he works, his word. Also, uh, over on YouTube, make sure that you know that that's go and watch the replay. If you are watching this and uh, you're just now getting here and you want to come back maybe maybe and watch the replay, YouTube, the address to get to our account is Pastor Cindy Barnes, Pastor Cindy Barnes. So I thank you, Lord, for blessing each and every person. Open up their hearts to be able to receive this word. Open up their eyes to, to be able to focus in on what you might be trying to teach them. Father, the whole reason for writing the book and the whole reason for the teaching at all is so that we can understand who we are in the body of Christ. So we can understand that we are someone very valuable, very special to the Lord and to one another. So help me, Lord, to be able to just answer questions as they come in and uh, to God be all glory. All right, the goose. And I had a goose that looked just like this goose just exactly like this goose, just like him. And his name was Moose, Moose the Goose. Of course it was. And I wanted a goose and we went to this place called the Chicken Lady. Why did we go to the Chicken Lady for the goose? Because someone told us that the Chicken Lady also had geese babies. And so we went to this place called the Chicken Lady and yes, she had tons of chickens and all kinds of birds. And I said, I want a baby goose. And so she took us to the baby geese and they were all so cute. And she just picked one up and she just handed it to me and just kind of threw it at me almost. And she goes, now hold on to it, hold on to it. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. She goes, just let it smell you. Rub the goose on your shirt. Let him smell your, your shirt and your perfume and just you. And she says, when you're ready, put him down and take off running. And I'm like, oh, no, he's going to run away. How is she goes, trust me. So I held the little baby goose for maybe 30 seconds. I put the baby down and I took off running. And that little baby ran as fast as his little goose legs could run. Honk, 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 honk. She said, forever, you will be his mama. It was the cutest thing. And it really was true. And that goose, I would go sit outside by his little pond, I'd take my little chair out there and he would come running Hong Kong Kong and jump up into my lap and fall asleep every day. He loved me. Moose the goose. But uh, yeah, that was my little goose. And um, I can't remember how many years he lived. He lived a long time. We didn't keep him for his entire life. There came a time that uh, some friends of ours had really a better setup than we did. And we knew that moose would maybe be happier there. We didn't know for sure. So we thought, well, let's do it as a trial. They had a better pond, a bigger, they had other birds. Moose loved it. He never even looked back at me, but he had already had me for many years. He was tired of me. So he had a new mama. His new mama was a man. <laughs> he had a new mama named Tom <laughs> and he lived out the rest of his years on that farm. But uh, that's my story, my goose. But let me just read about the goose. This is our road rage Christian. Uh-oh. After I say all those sweet things about the goose. The goose in the body of Christ is our road rage Christian. In public, they are often very loud and very proud of their faith in Jesus. 
<laughs> just start imagining. Do you know anyone like that? This Christian many times will be the one with the giant Jesus loves you bumper sticker on the back of their car. Their sin or the thing about the goose unsurrendered to God, unsurrendered to God, the sin that the goose struggles with is anger and lack of patience. Anger and lack of patience, okay? They wouldn't like to admit it, but they live their lives feeling like the world kind of owes them something. So they kind of wake up every day and just kind of feel like they're, what's that word? Like they're, uh, uh, what's the word, Dennis? Privileged, privileged. It says here, when talking to the goose, you hear throughout their sentences and phrases what sounds like a resume, a resume of things that they're doing for the Lord. Oh, well, I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm doing that for the Lord. Next week, I'm doing this for the Lord. And oh, so-and-so called me and I get to do that for the Lord. And all, it's all for the Lord. It's all for the Lord. But did you hear about that? I was the one that got to go and do it for the Lord. It was me, me. It was me that they asked to come. I was the guest speaker. I was the one on that billboard. Did you guys see it? Did you see it? Oh, I had, there was a article about me in the newspaper. Oh yeah, it was all about God, but I was the one. Did you see it? It was a picture of me. Did you guys get a copy of that? <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> and listen, if God is using you in all kinds of ways, there's nothing wrong with, with shining so bright because you're excited, but you've got to really be careful that you are not blindsided by um, pride. Be very careful that you stay very humbled. You're very grateful that God has chosen you. You, you know that he could choose anyone and he's chosen you and you take it very serious. Uh, you're grateful, you're thankful, and it's nothing to hide. You don't need to hide it or play like it's not happening, but just make sure that you don't allow pride to come in and have any part of that blessing. All the blessing goes to the Lord. All the glory goes to the Lord. So the unsurrendered goose could, or when I say unsurrendered, I'm talking about geese that say that they're Christians. Some don't, but some say that they're Christians, but they have never really surrendered to God. So they still struggle with their flesh so much that people on the outskirts can hardly stand it. The people on the outskirts, eh, to them, it looks like the goose is full of themselves, but they do love the Lord, but they just have not yet really surrendered or understood. What do I do with all of this emotion that's in me? How do I do it right? You know, and so I think that's what's important about learning. How do I handle the beauty of the magnitude of the gifts entrusted to us without looking like we're tooting our own horn? Okay. I think one way is to just get in the habit of saying all glory goes to the Lord. Make no, uh, you know, I can't think of words tonight. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. Make no apology. Make no excuse. All glory goes to the Lord. But I'm so proud to be a vessel of the Lord. Okay? It's just having the right attitude. That attitude will cause your altitude to always rise high. Um, <clears throat> When you try to share, it seems like they're sidetracked with other thoughts. So you might say, oh, you got asked to go and speak at such and such. You know what? They called me too. Oh my gosh, maybe we could ride together. And you're like, this is exciting. And they're just like, you know, they're like off in La La Land. They're not really excited about your joy or your good news because <laughs> they're just full of themselves. Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to get it right, because you know what? Every one of these birds, they want to get it right. They just need to be taught how to get it right. 
That's all. If you don't know, you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. That's why it's important to, to always pay attention. Don't get in the habit of saying, oh, I learned this once. I read that once. <clears throat> Excuse me. I already know this stuff. Don't get in that very bad habit because you might miss out on learning something that will change the course of all of your tomorrows. Okay. You just never know what day God is going to drop a nugget into your spirit that uh, you're going to be flabbergasted. But if you're sidetracked and you're daydreaming because you already know this stuff and Oh, you got asked to? Oh, gosh, big deal. You know, I'm sure they really just wanted me. You know, you got to just be careful. <clears throat> be careful because your flesh always wants to rise up and take the applause. Your flesh always wants to rise up and take the applause. Your flesh always is listening for the encore. Are the people asking for encore? Encore. Be very careful. You, you might, it sounds funny, it is, it's comical, but it's so serious and it's happens so easy, happens so easy. The credit to the Lord, that's right, that's right. Yeah, in the spotlight, that was it, that was it. Thank you, don't go anywhere, <laughs> don't you leave. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So it says here, so if you try to share what God is doing, it seems like the goose at times is sidetracked with other thoughts. And it's very uncomfortable for you to want to get a word in. It's as if they honk to get the right of way. And then they continue on their resume. So there it is. The following scenario will sound familiar to those of you who know a goose. It will also sound familiar to those of you who are married to a goose. It will also be familiar to those of you who are friends with a goose. And last but not least, uh, it's gonna hit home if you are a goose. So <laughs> listen up, this scenario. A goose will sing praises with their loudest voice. They lift their hands in worship, and you cannot help but notice their outward expression of love for the Lord. They amen the pastor's message, and they hallelujah every exciting point. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's what happens next that's the issue. All right. So they amen the pastor, the pastor's message. They shout hallelujah at every point. Hmm. After church, they'll be the first one to run up to the pastor and say, good message, pastor. Oh, did I need to hear that today? Who you were on fire today. OK. They'll be the first, among the first. There's no way that you'll beat them in line to be able to shake the pastor's hand after the message. As you see them walking through the lobby, going toward the parking lot, but not before they pour their coffee and have their little fellowship, you can hear them all the way across the sanctuary. You can hear them all the way out in the lobby, in the foyer. You can hear them commenting to others about the awesome church service. Man, I'm glad I got here early today. Oh, this was just fantastic. What are you guys doing today? Well, man, next week's probably going to be just as awesome. Man, I'm getting here early. I'm bringing friends. You guys bring friends next week. This is just, woo, this church is on fire for God. Revival has, 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 has arrived. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. And then the unthinkable happens. The unthinkable happens. The unthinkable happens, especially to the family of the goose. They get in the car. Oh, the parking lot's full of cars. That's a good thing. That means, oh, the church was filled with souls today. It's a good thing that the parking lot is full of cars because in every car, there's people. 
And for every person, there is a blessing that God had. It is a good thing that there was cars filling up that parking lot. So the goose now has been the first one to shake the pastor's hand, hallelujahing every point during the sermon, telling everyone what a great service it was. Can't wait till next week. Goes out into the parking lot, gets in the car, the family gets in the car, the wife gets in the car. And they're already going, oh, Lord. Why? Because they, they already know that daddy's a goose or my hubby's a goose or my wife is a goose. But right now, the goose is in the driver's seat. They make sure everyone's buckled up. Buckled up, kids buckled up, everybody buckled up, wife buckled up, hubby buckled up, depending on who's driving that car. And they begin to pull out of that parking lot. They begin to back out of that space, that one that they just were sure that God had waiting for them when they got there. Wow, I am blessed. God just blesses me everywhere I go. I am blessed coming in and going out. <laughs> All of a sudden, the murmuring begins. The clown in the car behind me could have waited till I pulled out. Did you see that clown behind me? Who in the world, who is driving that car behind us? Didn't they see that I was that I was pulling out first? And they begin the murmuring. And, and, the, and the kids begin to go down into the seat, down into the seat. Oh no, don't let anyone see me. The wife or the husband in the passenger seat is going, oh Lord, not today, not again, not today, not again. That clown in the car behind me could have waited till I pulled out. Before he or she gets to the driveway, the goose begins to feel their blood start to boil. Uh-oh, say the children. Not again, Lord. Please, not again. Soft prayers come from the mouth of the soulmate in the passenger seat as they hope that nobody, nobody, nobody notices the big old Jesus loves you Bible, Bible sticker on the back of their car. Oh Lord, why did he put that on the back of the car? As a goose puts the pedal to the metal to take his or her rightful place, according to the goose, onto the road, the road rage begins. Honk, 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 honk. So that's what gooses say when gooses are mad. Honk, honk. The kids wish that they could hide. The soulmate wishes that they could disappear, but the goose has already convinced themselves that it's everyone else. It's everyone else that should be acting like, like a Christian should. Aren't we leaving church? How come everyone's acting like a mess? We're leaving the house of God and look at what's going on. People are pulling out in front of me. People won't let me in. What in the world do they think is happening? And they don't see in the rear view mirror, if they were to just look, they don't see that it's them. The problem is them. The problem is no one but them. They convince themselves that it's everyone else that should be acting Christ-like. The family of the goose pray diligently that their daddy or mommy will recognize what they're doing so that a they'll be able to step into the position of God's plan for them b so that the family will no longer need to hold their breath or hide their face every time they pull out of the church and the great news is God answers prayer so they did the right thing they prayed they prayed now everyone else Surrounding the, all the other cars, oh, they all know the goose. They talk about the goose behind the goose's back, which they shouldn't be. Don't talk about the goose behind the goose's back. Pray for the goose because that's, the, that's what we want. We want God to deliver and to minister and to take us from glory to glory and to teach us and, 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 and use us and, and cause us to shine brighter and shine brightest. As we pray for others that are still on the journey, don't just throw them out into the into the 
freeway because it's easy to talk about a goose because they're so loud and everything they do is so big. Everyone notices, okay? But the ones that are praying are the ones in the car, the ones closest to the goose. They're the ones praying because they're the ones that really love the goose, okay? And that's the right choice because God answers prayer. A transformed, redeemed, and set free goose in the body of Christ looks a little different, looks a lot different. It says here, a transformed, redeemed, and set free goose in the body of Christ shows the world what it looks like to be big and bold for Jesus. No resume needed. Their love for God does all the speaking. So instead of saying all the things that they are, they just live it. Okay, so the goose just needs to be transformed by the renewing of what? The mind. How does that happen? By allowing your mind to match what the word of God says. Okay, once that begins to happen, the transformation also begins to happen. Once the transformation begins to happen, the changes come. And, and it doesn't have to take years and years and years. It just needs a few people that believe that God is more powerful than the goose's loud honk, okay? And that God is, is knocking on their heart's door, trying to get their attention. You don't have to be this way to be mine. Let me show you a better way, a way that not only, because God knows that the goose loves God, but all the people talking about the goose question whether or not he loves God or loves himself or herself. <clears throat> It says, it won't be long before the children in the back seat, the soulmate in the passenger seat, and all of the people who have ever been on the other side of the goose's wrath will see the transformation too. Doesn't take long. The goose who has been delivered from, here it is, self-righteousness and pride, there it is. That's the sin. And all of us, if we're not careful, can fall into that category. I may be, uh, you know, well, who do I think I am in the body of Christ? I can't think of the bird I'm trying to think of. The one that delivers babies. What's that bird called? <laughs> you know, the bird that delivers babies. Ah. <sighs> Who wrote this book? <laughs> and well, I could have said anything, but I, no, that's not it. Ooh. I'm gonna find, there it is, the stork. Thank you, Miami boys. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Jetta. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> I may be the stork. I may have a lot of stork in me and the stork has a lot of uh, gift of administration. But if I'm not careful, I can be, I can have a tad of the goose. And so can you, so can any of us. So we don't want to put down the goose to make ourselves look better because it can happen to the best of us. We've got to really be on guard. Um, so it says here, the goose has now been delivered or is being delivered from self-righteousness and pride also from anger and lack of patience, like I said in the beginning. It says the goose will not only become a courteous driver, but the goose will become courteous in every way. So it's not just about honk, honk, you're in my way on the road. The goose unsurrendered to God is honk, honk, you're in my way. Honk, honk. Didn't you hear? I was talking first. Honk, honk. I thought I made it clear last week what I wanted. Do you see my point? We got to be careful that just because we said it once doesn't mean that everyone is right there writing down all of the goose's requests so that we can be in good standing with the goose. The goose needs to be in good standing with the Lord. 
And as that happens, everything falls into place so beautiful. And so it says, let me just read that again. It won't be long before those children in the back seat, the soulmate in the passenger seat, and all the people who have been on the other side of the goose's wrath will see the transformation too. The goose who has been and is being delivered from self-righteousness, pride, anger, and lack of patience will not only become a courteous driver, but will become courteous in every way. Hallelujah. A big, bold example of living for Jesus. Shining brightest. That is a great example of shining the brightest, the very brightest. Whatever bird you are, whatever gifts, calling, talent that you have been entrusted with, shining the brightest in those gifts, in that calling. Hallelujah. Because the heart of every goose is big and bold. And they are born with this big, bold personality. So we're not asking the goose to shush up. We're just asking the goose to learn the value of the true gift. That's all. Once you learn the value of whose you are and the true gift that's been placed within you, you don't have to scream to make the gift known. You just need to shine. It seems so simple, doesn't it? <laughs> it depends where you are in the chapter, whether it's simple or not. But the answer is prayer. My opinion is it's going to take the prayer of others for the goose to be able to acknowledge or to see the error of their way way before you can expect the goose to pray for themselves because they do struggle with the pride. When you struggle with pride and arrogance, ugh, there's a fly on my head. There's a fly in here. We have, do you guys have flies right now? It's so hot. I think that's why. And they're finding their way in and they're weird. They're acting too brave. <laughs> All right. Um, understanding your value, understanding uh, the gift causes you to shine bright. Doesn't mean you have to yell loud. But you won't know it if you're filled with pride. If you're filled with pride, you're filled with arrogance. So the arrogance says to you that you're perfect. It's not you, it's them. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you've got to be compassionate to that because they, they're not seeing through the same lens that you are. And so as obnoxious as it is, and it can be so obnoxious, the, the best thing you can do for a goose, a true goose, is to really, really lift them in prayer. Because the gift that they have is so precious, so absolute precious, but they may never know it. They may never come to the fullness of it if they're left to their own life to pray for themselves. They may never, ever see it. They can live their whole entire life uh, being arrogant and self-centered and just all-knowing. Well, it's going to get me. The Lord is all knowing. We are not that fly. Says, because the heart of every goose is big and bold and they are born with personality, plus they are really one of the most fun types of people to hang around. It's a wonderful day when you see your friend, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your children, your brother, set free is a beautiful thing. When you see them transformed and delivered, it says the transformed and delivered from pride, self-centeredness, arrogance, the one that is delivered from this, this goose now pulls out of the parking lot and yells out the window, honk if Jesus loves you. I know that's silly, but I did it. I did. Honk, honk, honk if you love Jesus. 
Yeah, I said it backwards. Honk, honk, honk if you love Jesus. Honk if you love Jesus. They're out there holding the sign. Now the children have another reason to be embarrassed, but it's a better reason to be embarrassed. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to rest and to prove, excuse me, test and to prove. I knew that was wrong. Then you will be able to test and to prove what God's will is, his good, his pleasing and his perfect will. And that is what we want each and every one of us, no matter what bird you are in the body of Christ, no matter what gifts God has entrusted to you, our prayer should be that we will discover <clears throat> the value of who we are and whose we are so that his good, pleasing, and perfect will will shine brightest through us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, a fun fact, a couple of fun facts about geese. <clears throat> Wild geese usually, oh, I, I love this because this is so good. This is such a God thing, and this is really what geese do. Wild geese, <clears throat> excuse me, fly in a V formation because as each goose flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the other birds behind it. And this decreases the wind resistance. It's kind of like a wake, you know, how a boat goes in the water and it causes a wake behind it. It's kind of that, that V formation. That's what they do. The V formation, because each goose, as they flap their wings, it creates an uplift for the other birds behind it. And this decreases the resistance of the wind. When the birds in the front get tired, the other birds from behind replace them. So imagine the V. So you've got the bird in the, in the head and he is flapping and the ones on each side are flapping and it's making it easier for all these birds to be able to rise higher. As the ones in the front doing most of the work begin to get tired, they will go like this and they'll fly and they'll go to the back of the V and the next in line will take the place. And that's how they're able to fly long distances. If one goose was in the front the whole time, they wouldn't be able to go for the same distance. But when they do it that way, the ones in the back are able to kind of take the rest and they're able to kind of soar on the air current, the air current of the Holy Ghost. That's what we want to soar through life on the air current of the Holy Ghost. As you allow God to be center point, central point, keep your eye on him. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will cause you to rise to a higher level. He will cause the, the negative uh, position that the enemy wants you to be in to be far from you. He will cause that air current to, to rise you higher and higher, higher levels in Jesus' name. As we continue marching in that way, we can go long distances in that way. When we take our eyes off of the Lord and put them onto anything else, that's when we start to get exhausted and tired and I don't know how long I can do this. This is too hard, this work. You start saying things like that. You'll hear yourself saying things like that. But as long as your eyes are on the Lord and he is central, he is center point, then he is making a way for you where there seems to be no way. And you will find yourself doing things, <laughs> soaring places that you would never have dreamed you could because without him, you can't. So, oh, it's so good. So wild geese for in that for, fly in that V formation. I'm going to read it again. Because as each goose flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the other birds behind it. And this decreases the wind resistance. When the birds in the front get tired, the other birds from behind replace them. This will extend their flying range 70%. That's huge, 70% compared to when they fly alone. So they can go much further when they fly together than when they fly alone. I don't need church. I don't need people. I just love Jesus. I can do it all by myself. You can, 
but you're stronger together. Believe you me, we are stronger together. We can go further together. We can pray through things together that we cannot pray alone. So much is to be said about gathering together and staying together. That's why the enemy does everything in his power to cause division. Don't let him. Don't let him divide you. Don't let him. Hey, Shirley, I see you. <laughs> she says, YouTube. <laughs> Here's another thing interesting. It says, um, oh, oh, let me finalize this V formation. It says also um, or that 70%, they can go 70% further than if they were to fly alone. Also, the geese behind in the back occasionally will honk to encourage the geese in front of them, keep on going, keep on going. You're doing good to maintain their speed. So the haunt, when you, if you, have you ever seen geese in a V formation? I have. It is so beautiful. It is elegant. It's just, it's just, you don't have time to run and get a camera. You just have to just notice it and watch it and enjoy it because it's going to be, they're going to be gone in a minute, but you always will hear honking, honk, honk, honk. It's not the ones in the front honking. It's the ones in the back honking, encouraging the ones in the front. You can do it. You can do it. Isn't that great? Such team spirit. Such team spirit. It says Ge geese help and protect other geese that are in trouble. When a goose, this is sad. When a goose falls out of the sky due to sickness or being wounded, sometimes they're shot different things, and they fall from the sky, it says the other geese will follow it down to the ground, and they will stay with the wounded, injured, or sick goose until either it's able to fly again or until it passes on. It says, then they fly out in formation and try to catch up with the flock. Part of the flock kept, keeps going, part of the flock stays behind. The, the flock that stays behind is to minister to the one that fell from the sky. And they stay with them until they're either able to get their energy up to fly again or until it passes on. And then they take off again and they try to catch up with the formation. And it says such loyalty, if we could be so loyal, right? If we could be so loyal to one another, isn't that beautiful? Well, that's our goose in the body of Christ. And so if you're a goose, you know it by thinking you know it all, thinking you have it all, thinking you've done it all. If you're kind of in that realm, if you feel like, gosh, I've been a Christian for 89 million years, I know more than everyone else. I don't need to be going to Bible study. I don't need to be listening to all this. If you hear yourself saying things like that, you might be speaking from uh, an old wineskin. And that's another subject, but the old wineskin holds the old wine. The new wineskin cannot be put in the old wineskin. The new, I mean, the new wine cannot be put in the old wineskin or it will bust. It won't hold it. The new wine is for the new wineskin. And so that's the revelation of God's anointing and power for today. And so people from the old wine and the old wine skin, they just don't think that there's a reason for any growth. We've always done it this way. They're kind of like in the book, they'd be called a penguin. Everything's black and white. We're going to do everything like we've always done it. This is the way it's done. It's, we're going to always do it this way. We're not interested in your way or anything else. This is how it's always been done. This is how we're going to always do it. When you're in that it's kind of a spirit of religion, when you're in that spirit of religion mentality, uh, the old wine and the old wine skin, you're missing out on what God is doing today. And you don't want to miss out on what God is doing today. So always be loyal to God. Always be open to God. Always be open to learn something new from God every day. I want to be a new wine skin, ready and filled with new wine. And so do you, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that's it. We only have, oh my goodness. 
We only really have one more bird, and then it's the final bird, the eagle. And so tomorrow night, we'll, we'll read the, the last bird. I always cry when I read the last bird. So we're almost done. And then we'll get back to just regular Bible studies on Monday and Tuesday. And I'm really excited to do that, to get back to that. But I'm also very excited that we've gone through the book. I think that a lot of you have learned a lot about yourself and about other people that you know and love. And it will just benefit you in your walk with God. We're never to be old. We're never too old to be used. True. But my point is we're never too old to be taught. That's the point here. We need to always yearn for more teaching, more revelation from God. Um, because he's new every morning, the Bible says. But yes, amen. All right. So here we are. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It was like spiritual story time. It, exactly. That's exactly what it was meant to be, Bert. Um, Jesus taught in parables. And um, I believe that the reason he taught in parables is because it's easier for us to remember stories than it is for us to remember facts from a history book. Okay. If you give me, I remember being in eighth grade and there was a history test. I don't, I don't even remember what it was. I just remember it was a history test. It was a big history test that all eighth graders had to take and pass. And if you did not pass, you would not go on to high school. And I remember just being petrified because I could not learn that way. I could just, I struggled to learn historical events and dates and times. I just struggled with remembering those things because it was never interesting to me enough to remember, I guess. And I remember thinking, I'm going to be in eighth grade for the rest of my life. <laughs> and I literally, I remember, I do not suggest this. This is because I didn't know any better. I didn't know a better way. I didn't tell my parents, I'm afraid I'm going to fail. And so what I did is I took some of those dates, the ones that I knew I'd never remember, and I wrote them on my hand. I can't remember if I even used it. I don't know. I did pass the test. I barely passed the test, but I passed. And I, from that day to this day, I just do not prefer learning that way. I don't think that it's the best way for most people to learn. But when you tell a story, people remember the story. They do. I mean, there's a sermon that I love to teach. Um, it's called, his name is Hobart Hanavar. <laughs> That's the name of the sermon. His name is Hobart Hanavar. I love this story. It's a true story. And uh, there's a part in the story that I say that I'm on my way. I was on my way after church and I was supposed to go to this little, like a dress party or a friend of mine was having a party and I said, I'd go, but I needed hairspray and I knew I was out of hairspray and I needed the hairspray. And so as I tell the story, I will ask in one of these nights, I might tell that sermon again, but I ask you 12 different times. Now, what was I on the way to the store to get? And everyone knows hairspray. <laughs> hairspray. They still don't even know what it is I'm going to talk about, but they know I had to stop and get hairspray. Whether I did or didn't, well, you have to just wait and find out. And what difference did it make if I wouldn't have stopped to get that hairspray? How would that story have changed? Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, story form works. Hi, Andrea. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, is there anyone here that has a prayer request or a question or struggling with something? Hey, hey, Krish Sangma, where are you from? Welcome in. Welcome to the Glory Chain. You are coming in on our YouTube channel. We also meet on TikTok. You can join us on TikTok anytime uh, under Pastor Cindy Barnes. Uh, TikTok is our channel that we do replays of a couple of sermons a week, but we meet five nights a week on TikTok. So 
Go check that out and follow me over there on TikTok under Pastor Cindy Barnes. But please subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you will be notified both ways. I'd love to know where you're coming in from. All right. Also, if there's anyone that happens to be new here tonight, and if you're up there in the balcony, I see a few of you. Um, don't be shy. This is the, the time that is your turn. It's your turn now. What do you need? How can I pray for you? How can I go before the Lord on your behalf right now? How can we make what you're going through better? How can you have hope for a bright tomorrow? Come on, don't leave here if you need help. I had my appointment today. This is Andrea. Everything is good with the baby. Thanks be to God. Absolutely. We give God all the glory, don't we? And we've been praising him for a great uh, nine months and then a great delivery, haven't we? And so there's no reason to expect anything less. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Um, Ah, women are not to be pastors, according to the Bible. No disrespect. That's okay. That is definitely a uh, debatable issue. I mean, I don't agree with, with that, but I understand that way of teaching. Uh, I don't believe that's what the Bible teaches, but it, even no matter what, uh, I've been called to this office as a pastor um, December of 1995, all these years. So, of course, I've heard that said to me many, many, many hundreds of times, but God is the one that called me, and God is the one that keeps me. But I do appreciate you being here, and I do understand your concern, and I appreciate that. I thank you for that concern. Noel, hello, hello. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, I just take it day by day. That's right. Um. No, you, um, what is your first name? Let me see here. Well, I still don't know. <laughs> Be yourself, enjoy yourself, and love yourself, Christian. All right, let me follow you. All right, no, you didn't come across as rude at all. Uh, you just have had a question. And just... Um, in case you might be interested, I am going to be doing a, probably a 10-minute teaching. I'm able to do a 10-minute video. I'm just now hearing that as of today. I think it's been available to me for a while, but I'm able to do a 10-minute video, and I'm going to be doing a video on, in fact, I've got the subjects right here. I was just looking at them. I'm going to be doing three uh, sermons that will be on my profile, and they'll be pinned, so they'll be at the top. One of them is going to be, uh, the story of Carl Mann or the planting of seeds. The planting of seeds always brings a harvest. It's really a testimony. There's another teaching, a teaching on women pastors. Okay. And so you'll be able to listen to that and see why it is that I have a strong conviction and peace in uh, just obeying Christ on my own right here to say, yes, Lord, I will, I will accept the mandate of not being male nor female, but being a voice in the body of Christ. But I will teach that. And the third is teaching on loving all, including LGBTQ. All right, so those are gonna be the three that are coming up and they'll be pinned to the top of the profile. So when people come in and ask, um, I'll be able to direct you to a place that you can get, I don't know, food for thought. Get food for thought. There is this little fly. I'm to, I'm go, I will win. <laughs> I will win. Okay. Jeremy, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. So <laughs> you're going to need to rephrase that. Um, Andrea, let me see what you're saying here. Elena has a bump on her face that is not resolved, resolved itself. May you pray for her. Um, absolutely. I'm worried. There we go. I'm worried it may be skin cancer bump. Okay. You know why you're worried? Because that's the first thing that happens if faith does not take over. <laughs> 
<laughs> if faith does not take over right away, worry is right there waiting. Uh, worry is what wants to bring us to a place of uh, panic and anxiety and all of that yucky stuff. All the stuff that the Lord said don't do because he is with us. But let's pray. Father, we lift up this sweet little Elena to you in Jesus' mighty name. And we just ask you to place your hand of health and healing directly on that spot on her face, that place that seems to be uh, infected or it just doesn't want to go away. Father, we just pray right now that you re remove that from her and that anything that is not of you, it must go. Uh, we come against any cancer or any thought of cancer. We come against anything that is uh, in a negative light. We say, thank you, Lord, that by your stripes she is healed. And I thank you, Lord, right now that you uh, touch the mama's heart and cause her faith to rise up to meet you in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Father, that the baby is completely healed in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, always be aware that the enemy is trying to find little ways to get us sidetracked, to cause us to be uh, looking anywhere except to love, okay? Anytime you start to direct your eyes anywhere or direct your thoughts anywhere besides love, uh, the enemy is trying to get your attention, okay? Be aware of it. If you're aware of it, then as it begins to happen, you can resist it. No, 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 you don't. I'm a child of the King of Kings. No weapon formed against me will prosper. And the Bible says, and so I declare, the Bible says, and so I declare, okay? We need to declare, but we need to declare what the Bible says, okay? That no weapon formed against me will prosper. And guess what else? I declare that as I lean into the Lord and resist the enemy, the enemy will flee. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord. I declare that I am leaning into you. I declare and I agree and I agree with your word and I walk into your word and I receive your word and I hold on to your word. I hold on to the hem of your garment. I hold on to every word and all the principles and every promise in your word is yea and amen to the believer. And I thank you, Lord that all of that belongs to me as an heir, as a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. So I am at peace. I am at rest. I am not afraid. I walk by faith. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I am going to shine bright today in Jesus' name. I'm not going to allow my eyes to look this way or this way when God says, keep your eyes on me. In fact, he says, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Bert, for deliverance with addictions, please. Father, I thank you right now for Bert. I thank you that we've had the blessing of having him in the front row many nights now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're making sure to put yourself in the right place. So, Bert, let me give you a word of instruction, and then I'm going to pray for you. Uh, when, we, when we do the hard right thing, it's always right. The hard right thing is, is the right thing. Sometimes it's hard, but it's still right and you are putting yourself in the right place. And by putting yourself in the right place, the atmosphere is here. The presence of God is here. The anointing of God is here. The anointing of God is here. I want you to acknowledge that right now. I want you to say the anointing of God is here. I want you to say that in the chat screen, Bert. The anointing of God is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I want you to type the anointing of God is here. The anointing of God is here. The Bible says, and I declare, the anointing of God breaks every yoke. Type it up there. The anointing of God breaks every yoke. 
The anointing of God breaks every yoke. What is a yoke? A yoke is a bondage. A yoke is an addiction. A yoke is anything that keeps you from God's best. The anointing of God is here. The anointing of God is what breaks every yoke, every yoke. And the yoke is the bondage or the addiction. So I thank you now, Lord, as Bert has declared that the anointing of God is here. And as Bert has declared that the anointing of God breaks every yoke, I thank you, Lord, that the yoke of addiction has been broken in Jesus' name. In other words, the power the addiction had on you no longer has access to you. The power that the addiction had over you to do what you didn't want to do no longer has power to cause you to do what you don't want to do. You now have been given the breakthrough victory and the power to go and sin no more. Hallelujah. So now it's a matter of walking in it. Just like you're putting yourself in the right place. I've noticed you here night after night. You're putting yourself in the right place. You're putting yourself in the front row. You're putting yourself in the presence of God. You're putting yourself here. You're allowing yourself to be covered by, by the Lord, being covered by the blood of the Lamb. You're allowing yourself to hear the word of God. You're allowing your faith to grow. You're allowing yourself to believe for impossible things. So then you're able to ask for an impossible thing like, can God please break the power that this addiction had on me? Yes, he can, because the anointing of God is here. And the anointing of God breaks every yoke, every yoke of bondage, including addictions, every addiction. Every addiction is like a chain that had you bound and you now walk in victory, declare it. I walk in victory in Jesus. The anointing of God has broken the yoke of addiction. I now am free to walk in victory. No longer does it have a power pull over you. In Jesus' name, no longer. No longer. All that will remain is the remembering that it used to. Now be careful because the, the remembering that it used to sometimes causes people to go right back to it. Here's an example. You can take a big chain and you can put it around an elephant's leg when they're a baby and you can chain them up to a big old post and they only have like 12 feet that they can just walk around that post. They're growing up, they're getting bigger, they're getting bigger, they're getting stronger. Boy, they could just pull that whole pole down, but they don't remember that. They don't know they can pull it down. They just know when they were a baby, they couldn't pull it and they were stuck. And you can go and you can unlock that lock and you can take the chain off of that baby who is now a full grown, strong elephant. And you can say, now you're free. But because the elephant has the remembering of being in bondage all those years, just the memory of it keeps him close to that pole instead of free from the, the bondage of that pole. You understand? Do you understand? So you've been set free in Jesus' name. But the memory of that bondage, if you're not careful, will keep you close to the problem. You want to know that God has delivered you. You are free to go and sin no more. You are free to be free from every chain that had you bound. No longer are you bound. You are free. The anointing has broken the yoke. So walk free, be free, live free, stay free, stay free. How do I do it? How do I stay free? You stay in the anointing. You stay, you allow the new wine to fill you up. Anything that is old or not of God, let it go. Be filled with the power of God and God alone in Jesus' name. And that is where your victory is. All right. Hallelujah. And everybody, if you were listening, you all just learned something. Praise you, Father. Hey, Tammy Joe, how are you? Bless you, love.
Asia, pray for me. I have no job. I have an interview tomorrow. Thanks. I have $33 on my wallet. Okay. Three is a good number. Three and three. I like it. On the third day, he rose again. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for Asia, for Asia coming in here. I may be saying that wrong. I apologize if I am. But I pray that tomorrow the interview that you have will be ordained by God, that as you go through that door, you will go through with the knowledge that you are being led there by a power higher than you, by a power higher than you. And I pray, Father, that this job will be the beginning of the answer. Now, when you get the job, make sure that you give to the Lord. Make sure you start, start out right. If we don't start out right, we're always going to be broke. We're always going to be poor. Start out right. I'm not saying give to us. I'm saying give to the Lord somehow, somewhere. Okay? Make sure you plant that seed. Sow a seed and continue to sow seeds according to the word of God as the Lord uh, provides for you plant those seeds the harvest will return and it will be a continual harvest but when we only give once a year at christmas time or once a year at easter time then the rest of the year we're running on empty with the warning light on saying what happened i love god we've got to follow the principles in god's word if you want to give to this ministry, you are more than welcome to. I would if it was me, simply because 100% of it goes straight to the to the work of the Lord. 100% of it. So you can be sure that 100% is the investment of your 100%, whether it's a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a dollar, doesn't matter the amount. What matters is when you give, you give with a cheerful heart. You do not give because you feel pressured to, but you give as a farmer would plant a seed, always expecting that that seed is going to grow into a bush that's going to have fruit that's going to be filled with more seeds that will then replenish and replenish and replenish and the harvest continues. All right. So thank you, Lord. And I pray that you'll enjoy that job. The job is, is the easy part. The hardest part is the rest that I just explained to you so that you'll never again say, I only have $33 in my wallet. You will be a giver. You will not be a taker. The Lord is going to bless you. He says that I will bless your coming in. I will bless your going out. He says that you will, you know, we are serving a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and he owns a thousand hills too. And he has called us to, to be fruitful, to be filled with, with blessings to bless others. And so you will be a blessing to others. God will use you. You will remember that day that you had $33 and you will be able to say to others, here is a seed that I am planting. I want to invest it in you and I believe in you and take this seed and now you plant it and you replant it and you walk in it and that's how it begins. Okay. Let us know how that interview goes. I have a feeling it's going to go very good. Hi, East Beats, I see you. Hallelujah. All right. Well, thank you for the gifts. I'm just now seeing all those gifts that came up. Thank you, everyone. You guys are so loving and kind, and I appreciate all that you do. Thanks for being here tonight, everyone. Um, I'll be so excited for tomorrow night. We're practically finishing the book tomorrow night. We actually might finish the book tomorrow night. Why not? Then we'll move on to something else. Yeah, so come back tomorrow. Um, um, hang on. <laughs> Asia, don't even get involved. Don't allow anyone or anything to remove from you the blessing that you just received. You've just received encouragement from the Lord and the enemy just wants to come and take it out. He just wants to wipe it away. Don't let it. Don't even let him. Uh, Jake, I understand what the Bible says. Okay. And I thank you and appreciate your concern. Um, all right. 
Before I say goodnight, let me just make sure there's not someone here that still has a prayer request. This is last call. I'm going to say goodnight to you too. Thanks everyone for being here. You might be watching this three years from now. Imagine that. Celebrate that. You're going to find us over on, on TikTok under Pastor Cindy Barnes. Go to our website, theglorychain.com. Get connected. Stay connected. That really is a key to your victory. And I'm so happy to have seen you here tonight. Thank you, Miss Shirley. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for your prayers always. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.